Well, over the years, um, back in the 1960s, the first real custom hearing aids began to come out. These were molded hearing aids with a device that sat on top of the ear uh, called BTEs, behind the ear. These devices were uncomfortable, cumbersome, and hard to use. Not to mention they were very unsightly and usually whistled. By the 1970s, they began making complete custom hearing aids which would fit into the ear. And this allowed the patient to make adjustments at ear level rather than reaching up on top of their ear. And they were a little bit less unsightly. By the 1970s, they had shrunk those down to half the size. Those were called in the canal hearing aids. And those were actually very nice. Patients really thought they felt good. Um, they were easy to adjust, but still people wanted invisible hearing aids. So by the late 80s, an instrument called a CIC was devised, and that device allowed patients to wear a hearing aid that was not only basically invisible, but delivered a lot of power, and it placed the microphone deep in the ear so that the patient could do a little bit better in background noise. The problem, however, was that with all the great custom devices that were made, the patient still suffered one thing, the barrel effect. This was the inability to hear naturally. In other words, the patient could hear much better, but there was a, a bassy sound or a barrel effect, as patients call it, that lingered with the hearing aid, sometimes forever. They did drill holes into these hearing aids to ventilate them, but it wasn't enough. Roughly in the 1990s, early 90s roughly, uh, they began experimenting with open fitting designs, which literally did not take off until the early part of the 21st century. These are called receiver in canal instruments. And what they do is they place the hearing instrument into the ear canal without plugging it. And if I can give you an example, standard hearing aids would plug the ear completely while open fittings would leave the rest of the ear canal open. What this does is it creates a much more realistic sound for the patient and it utilizes the ear's natural resonance so that things like music and speech sound much more natural. Aside from that, in the last couple of years, we have also moved on to what we call Bluetooth and wireless devices, which now allow even the most profound hearing patients to communicate effectively on a telephone, to watch television at a normal volume that doesn't bother other family members or neighbors. Um, these devices are also rechargeable. So we have the capability now to fit just about anybody. Uh, people with arthritis who normally wouldn't be able to change a battery or utilize a hearing aid, now all we have to do is make sure they can get it in and get it out of their ear. The rest is taken care of by technology.